why do it today? Why not do it next week when you're in session? This is an issue that has been going on for a while. Uh, you know, this is we had a choice to concur or send a bill to conference. If the auditor has unique concerns that, that are raised outside of something on this, we're happy to listen to those. We have other opportunities to address those concerns. But my understanding is this language effectuates the deal that the auditor agreed to, and if the auditor has new concerns, I welcome to hear them. Uh, we have opportunities to address that going forward. Doesn't other questions? By, by rushing this quickly, though, doesn't it sort of play into the narrative that Democrats are trying to raise that this that there is something to hide there and that there, there's concerns about transparency? I, I don't think there's anything to hide here. I think everybody had a chance to look at it. Everybody certainly has had a chance to read it. Uh, this has been an ongoing discussion. This issue has been, as I said, been around and debated for more than a year. The question here is, what is the scope of Jobs Ohio? Is it a private entity or is it a public entity? And that was effectively resolved when we passed Jobs Ohio. This just clarifies that. Other questions? Why did you uh, decide to, they needed to require the Racing Commission to resolve this issue between the horsemen and the tracks as far as what percentage? And why did you tie the percentage to the, how much money they're spending on their VLT facilities? Well, that's, that's been part of the agreement all along. Uh, if they spend more money in the facilities for the horsemen, that is a relationship as to what the, the, the split is going to be. I mean, the goal when, when VLTs went to the, to, the, to the various horse tracks was to encourage and strengthen horse racing. That was part of the discussion to sell that. Otherwise, the simpler answer would have been just to license seven facilities and auction those licenses. But the argument was that we already have gambling at these facilities and the horse tracks, and we need to buttress the horse track enterprise. And uh, the original negotiations that uh, I was involved in and that other folks around the state were involved in gave them a range. And everybody anticipated that the range would be the upper end unless they invest with the improvements to facilities to buy their rate down. And that's effectively what the understanding was for the agreement. Uh, a number of the operators have taken the opposite approach and said, no, 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 we're only going to do the low end of the range. That wasn't the agreement. That wasn't the understanding. This amendment just clarifies and effectuates what everybody believed the agreement to be. So now they have an incentive to negotiate on the other end. I mean, frankly, it was probably done backwards to begin with. Uh, whenever you give a range between 9 and 11, if there's no incentive for you as the horse track, uh, the owner, to ever pay more than 9, are you ever going to pay more than 9? Okay, so the, the question is, this puts more money back into the Ohio economy and, frankly, makes the deal uh, more transparent. And, you know, they weren't going to come to a deal unless you stepped in and required Well, they did. Them. They'd already That's opened. Well, we left them the opportunity to negotiate for over a year and a half. And so they're going to continue to negotiate. So what we do now is say, if you're not going to negotiate, you pay the upper range. If you want to pay a lower range, negotiate. Uh, we probably had the incentives, ba incentives backwards because the horse guys uh, didn't have any incentive. Uh, they didn't have any leverage. And so what we did was put it the way it should have been. They're still going to negotiate. In most cases, it's probably going to be closer to the 9%. But they're going to negotiate improvements at the facilities that, that were part of the original intent. Do you anticipate getting some more money in conference committee with the revenues? Have you got any indication? From Don't know. The One of the problems is, is that we took uh, in the House some of the additional benefits that normally happen in conference committee. And so we're taking a look at that. I, I do not know that we've had any indication that we're going to get additional revenues. Are you talking about taking the, the, the best estimates from both sides with the LSC? Is that what you're referring to? I, I think that's already happened. Okay. I think that happened in the House as the bill came over. Right. That's the benefits you're referring to. Okay. Well, usually it's caseload sure. and, and it's revenues. So yeah. And literally it was split. This time it wasn't split. And the House said that when they sent the bill over. So we're operating under those, under those constraints. The only way you get any money is if they, they come in and tell you there's more available. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, there's always other things that are done. I mean, another way is to look at, uh, I mean, you, you look at the numbers. What happens through the process is you're able to get more updated numbers in June than you can in February. But some of that has been happening on, on the process and happened earlier. So now the question is, are the numbers in June going to be better than the numbers in May or April? And the answer is probably not, but we'll see.